Hey everybody, this is the Marine with Backpacking with the Hammock. When purchasing footwear for the summertime or even the spring or fall time for activities in the great outdoor can be somewhat challenging. And buying a boot for the winter time can be very confusing. In this video we're going to look at three types of boots. We're going to look at the pack boot, the slip-on boot, and the insulated winter boot. And I believe after watching this video it'll help you decide which boot would work best for you. When purchasing a winter boot for a specific purpose or for certain climate conditions, temperature ratings can come into play. Now manufacturers will test boots under laboratory conditions to gain analysis for the performance with respect to the cold. Now these ratings will help determine how well your boot will perform in freezing or sub-zero temperatures or even lower. Now these refer to the lowest temperatures your feet can handle while maintaining warmth and comfort. Although temperature ratings can be overly optimistic, there's other factors that affect the condition of your feet inside the boot. Like physical activity, are you going to be moving a lot or are you going to be stationary for a long period of time? Exposure time, are you going to be on a short hike or are you going to be on a long winter trek where you're going to be out there for days hiking? And the last one's weather conditions, are you going to be out in the sloppy wet conditions where you need a waterproof boot? Or do you need a breathable boot where it's going to be cold? Always pick a rating that's slightly higher than your requirements so that you know you're fully covered and you have a little extra room for leeway. Now most winter boots are waterproof because water conducts temperature much faster than air. And in the winter time, whatever water you may encounter, it's going to be very cold. Now boot makers will protect the feet from outside moisture in two ways. Now the first is the boot could be made of some type of waterproof material like treated leather or rubber or it could be constructed with a thin waterproof membrane not unlike a rain jacket that's sewn in the interior of the boot. Using fully waterproof material like neoprene or rubber will keep the water out but often at a cost of breathability. In other words, it'll keep the water out but it'll trap the moisture inside which will lead to dampness or even a coldness to your foot after a long distance hike. The solution to this problem is wearing some type of vapor barrier sock. In the previous video I showed the viewers how to wear and put them on. But one important thing I failed to mention is make sure that they're completely out of your boot to keep your boot totally dry. And it helps to adjust them so it doesn't get bunched up inside. And then you tighten it down You'll notice them on your feet at first, but after a few minutes, you'll forget that they're on. Now the first type of boot we're gonna look at is a pack boot. A pack boot can be defined as a boot with a removable lining. However, most people associate the pack boot with cold weather footwear that is treated on the outside to be waterproofed with a warm inner lining to keep the foot warm. Although the concept has been around for a much longer time, the contemporary style with a rubber sole and a leather upper is only a little over 50 years old. The pack boots can be fairly heavy for the warmth and they are comfortable and are well protected from the water and the snow. The inner boot design does make for a less secure fit and they are typically clumsier to walk in than a single layer insulated hiking boot. They're great for short excursions, shoveling the walk and heading to the sliding hill and for more stationary activities like ice fishing, snowmobiling and sleigh rides. Now pack boots are very durable I've had this type for 30 years. This is a lacrosse ice king. It was rated for 100 below zero, negative 73 Celsius, which you can see is very optimistic. But, but my feet were never cold in these boots. Now the next boot we're going to look at is a slip-on boot. A slip-on boot can be defined as a boot that does not have a lacing system to secure the boot. They may have handles or pull tabs to help get them on or a loose enough cuff that sliding the foot right into the boot is an easy task. Slip-on boots can be made out of any materials including rubber, neoprene, leathers, textile, or any type of animal skin like moose, deer, or sheep. They may or may not be insulated depending on the application the boot is designed for and may have varying degrees of water resistance and walking comfort. Now my favorite slip-on boot is a muckluck. And this is from Stegard, it's called the Yukon. It has an upper quarter up. The bottom is made out of moose hide, which is very breathable and durable. And underneath is rubber 
sole to keep the moisture out. And inside is a felt wool liner. It's nine millimeter. And underneath the felt wool liner, you will have another nine millimeter felt wool insole. And underneath that would be a contour insole. Now these are very comfortable to walk in and they're made for extreme cold weather. Two weeks ago I was on a trip in the Boundary Waters and the temperatures were 30 below, negative 34 Celsius. And these boots kept my feet toasty warm. They worked really well. And if I'm going to do any extreme cold weather hiking or excursion, this is the boot that I'm going to wear. Now there's two reasons why this boot is very warm. One of them is it's very breathable, so when your foot sweats, the moisture comes out and it keeps your feet dry. And another reason is it's so flexible, so when your foot is constantly moving, which causes great circulation, so the warm blood is really flowing through your foot, and it helps keep your feet warm. So with this being very flexible, your feet has constant blood flow, which really helps your feet keep warm. Now a con on this boot is because it's made out of moose hide, it's very breathable, it's not waterproof. So when this boot is exposed to any slush or water, it will absorb water and it may get your feet wet and you'll lose that breathability which keeps your feet warm. Now they have a spray that you can spray on and make it waterproof. I don't put it on, I know this is gonna ruffle some feathers because I want it as breathable as possible to keep my foot warm because I use these for extreme cold weather. But if you're gonna be in conditions where it may be wet, then you may wanna spray these. But you can get some type of a rubber liner to go around here like a booty if you're gonna be exposed to wet conditions. Now another type of slip-on boots are these boots from Neos. You could wear a hiking shoe and these will just go right over the hiking shoe Winter hiking shoes are becoming popular for running and for a lightweight hiking boot, but they may not have the best insulation to protect you from the extreme cold temperatures. You just slide these over your hiking shoes. Fold this over. And it has Velcro here, so it's really easy to put on and take off. And now these are waterproof and they're very warm. And they have a cinch cord here to tighten it up. The main advantage to slip on boots is convenience. Now the third and the last type of boot we're gonna look at is an insulated winter hiking boot. Now in this category is made up of any boot that is a single layer, meaning that has no removable liner and is insulated against the cold and has a means of lacing up that allows a secure fit. Unlike most pack boots or slip-on boots, winter hiking boots are meant to be hiked over a long distance. What makes these boots different than a summer or a three-season boot is that they're under constant exposure to water, slush, ice, and of course snow. And that's why they need to be waterproof. Now my favorite winter hiking boot is by Vosk. It's called the Snow Bourbon. It has 400 Thinsulate. It's waterproof, has a good sole on there. These are very comfortable boots. It has a big toe box. It's loose fitting so I can Put a thick sock on there. I think this is one of the best winter boots out there. If you're thinking about getting a winter boot, I highly recommend this. Now I'll use this for snowshoeing and I have Bernie binders so I can use these for cross country skiing. It's just a great boot. Now a big con or negative for this type of boot is because they're waterproof, your perspiration is trapped inside the boot which will cause your feet to get damp. Especially if you're on a multi-day camping trip or winter trek, as days go by, the more moisture is trapped inside, and when you come to camp to air them out, they will not dry quick enough for the next day's hike. Even if you use a fire, the more days hiking, the wetter the boot. So the only solution is to use some type of vapor barrier sock. Now my final thought for the video is the pack boot is the most popular for work and play, and the reason why is they're so inexpensive compared to the insulated winter hiking boot and the muckluck. And you can find them in most department store or hardware stores. And if for any reason they get wet, you can remove this liner inside and the boot will dry fairly quickly. So now as the slip-on boots are becoming more popular like the mucks and being made of rubber or neoprene and they have the high upper, they trap moisture like no other boot. Because they're hard to dry, you may need some type of boot dryer. Now if the temperatures are 20 degrees or negative six Celsius or below, I believe the mucklucks are the best boots for extreme 
cold temperatures. This would be the boot of my choice for those conditions. But for sloppy, icy, wet conditions with temperatures 10 degrees or negative 12 Celsius and up, the insulated winter hiking boot would be my choice. For those sloppy, wet conditions, I highly recommend that you use some type of gaiter. Now these are from Outdoor Research and they're called crocodiles and they're made out of Gore-Tex. These will help keep your legs dry and warm and keep ice or snow going down into your insulated winter hiking boot. And for those icy conditions, it'd be wise to wear some type of crampon or ice spikes. These are from Catulas and they're called micro spikes. When trying on any pair of boots, always bring the thickest pair of socks we plan to use. Make sure it's not too snug or tight. This is very important. Well, this concludes this video on winter hiking boots. If you like this video, please click the like button down below and share. If you found this video to be helpful and insightful, please hit that subscribe button. But you got to hit that little bell on the right hand side if you want to be notified. But more important, if you have any questions or comments, I really would love to hear from you. This is the Marine with Backpacking with a Hammock. Thank you for watching and God bless. How well your boot will perform in freezing or sub-zero weather conditions.